Google has been killing it ever since Gemini 3 was released. Gemini 3, Gemini 3, Gemini 3 is our most intelligent model to date. From broken to beloved in a matter of months. He spent just two hours on Gemini 3 and now there's no going back. And most people know about your Nano Banana Pro for your images, Anti-Gravity for wipe coating, Notebook LM for slides and mind maps, and some people know about Code Wiki as well, which is for simplifying your GitHub repos. But on December 4th, Google has announced Workspace Studio, which is probably going to give your N10 and your Make and OpenAI Agent Builder some really tough competition. The thing about Google is that they are very patient and rich. They have the team, the infrastructure, the profits, the experience. I mean, I just don't know how anybody else can beat them because every product that they're releasing is either free or really really cheaper than their competitors. 2025 was all about AI tools but 2026 is going to be all about agents. While AI tools expect a prompt from you at every step, an AI agent expects a goal from you and a system instruction and then it just goes ahead to do its job like a high functioning robot. Now things will become crazier when companies build a team of agents. In fact, when they can build agents that can build even more agents. There's a German cleaning equipment company called Kasher that got early access to Google's unreleased workspace studio. You will not believe when I explain you what happened there. So earlier, if the team at Kasher share had to evaluate a new feature, they would have a very long time consuming process that relied on live meetings and a bunch of notes scattered around, which is obviously very hard to track. But now, Cashier used this new workspace studio to deploy a virtual team of agents. When a new feature idea is proposed in chat, a brainstorming gem was assessing its merit, a technical gem was performing a feasibility check, a UX gem was describing the possible user flow, and a final gem was drafting a complete user story for the team to review based on the outputs of previous steps. Now, for those of you who are here for the first time, GEMS is just a fancy way of agents that have been created using Gemini. Even now, if you go to Gemini on the left side, they have an option of using some GEMS. Right now, these GEMS can do basic things like make a storybook or stuff like that. But this is the future of how GEMS are going to be like. It's absolutely insane if you think about it. The problem is that most people don't even know about LLMs or AI tools. So forget about AI agents. And it's not not unemployment that you need to worry about, it's actually about being unemployable. Just to quickly revise for anybody who is watching me for the first time, most AI agents are made up of three parts. An LLM, which is the brain, you have memory, which is the context, and then tools, which is basically the main engine. Without tools, an AI agent is useless. The issue with ordinary LLMs is that they aren't really trained on your specific data. They don't know your specific business logic. So when you try to use them for real work, they end up hallucinating. But imagine taking a massive frontier model and making it an expert on your company. A model that knows your API documentations, your tones, your SOP. And to solve this exact problem, there's a new company called Nebius that has introduced Token Factory. And because they're doing good work, we decided to collaborate with them on this video. They have just launched their new post-training service that lets you fine-tune open source models like your DeepSeq version 3, GPT OSS 120B and Quen 3 Coder. Now here is why this is a game changer for developers. Developers. One, it handles the hard infrastructure. So whether you need your efficient LoRa adapters or a full multi-node training on 512 GPUs, Nebius manages the entire cluster so that you don't have to. Two, it solves the memory issue. It supports long context stability up to 131,000 tokens. Now usually training these giant models costs a fortune. Nebius is also offering free full fine tuning on their flagship GPT OSS 20B and 120B models. We're talking about free compute until January 9th, which means that you do not have to pay any additional training costs. So if you want to stop building just basic demos and actually start shipping production level software, then do check out Nebius. Coming back to the video, even after sorting your LLMs, you still need awareness around just the right kind of AI tools and their functionalities and their possibilities. So we run a content company, right? We make videos about these AI tools and from all the influencer content that I've seen, I still feel that people are not using Gemini 3 to its full potential. In fact, we've made a list of some mind-blowing use cases that are already viral on Instagram, but I thought if you haven't seen it yet, you might want to know about this. So if you use Gemini 3, you can enable the Nano Banana Pro model by selecting create images and using the thinking mode. Now the free plan gives you some trials after which you'll have to automatically switch to the normal Nano Banana. But with the pro version, if you write a question on a piece of paper, take a picture of it and upload it 
order to nano banana pro that model will generate a new image with the answer to that question written in your handwriting if you paste a youtube video url and paste this prompt you'll get a full infographic of its summary by the way the same features are available without much prompting inside your notebook lm as well even on the free plan and this is something i love about google they were creating deep research gemini 3 notebook lm in three separate verticals and now suddenly everything has come together they have launched code wiki which is basically notebook lm but for developers everything is now forming together right like the complete bigger picture is finally coming together and it is freaking out a lot of other ai companies all the big ai companies are freaking out ever since gemini 3 was announced in fact if you paste a google drive link of your video on the drive and ask for a summary with this prompt it'll go through the entire video and make a proper table of time stamped information students have made telekinesis games subject explainer animations proper games that you can play so now the question is that Ansh, where is all of is going and if i'm someone who's taken a loan to do a btech or if my parents are waiting for me to get that one crore package looking at these kind of outcomes i am very worried about what i will do after my btech ends and i'm pretty sure a lot of senior folks are also very anxious 2026 is a few days away and if there is someone who wants to protect their job as a software developer or as a technical person you need to hear these important mindset shifts and i've been talking to a lot of software engineers it's been a while for me since i left computer Science. I studied computer science, but I never pursued the technical career. But I've been talking to a lot of people who are in this industry, and we've made a list of some important mindsets and big ideas that I've collected from them. Firstly, AI will code, but humans will program. Now, coding is all about learning syntax and translating your thought into a Java or a Python or a C++ language. But programming is the art of true problem solving. When you take a difficult problem and actually solve it, humans will be given the responsibility of the problem solving solving parts of things while AI is going to be the one who will translate your instructions into machine code. Number two, physical and mental health will become your most valuable asset. And even Naval has said this again and again, that a healthy man can wish for a thousand things, but a sick man only wishes for one thing. I think this is a first principle uh, rule. I was also reading this book called Same As Ever and there the author Morgan Housel said that you need to bet on things that will not change, right? And I think the value of physical and mental health never really changed, but I think now it will become even more valuable with the kind of lifestyle that we're living, the kind of environment that we're living in, the kind of air that we're breathing in. If you don't take care of your health, you're bound to hit a ceiling very, very soon. Number three, the ability to read and write clearly in the age of AI slop. That's going to be a very valuable skill. In fact, I see so many people not reading and writing ever since content blew up. The ability to translate chaos into instructions and systems is going to be extremely valuable. Number four, more than building a product, distribution and trust will become a real mode because that's something that AI can't really replicate. Number five, we're now entering a K-shaped economy where 20% of your job skills will see 10x more productivity and 80% of job skills will plummet to zero. There's this new fancy word that has been uh, spreading around. It's called elastic careers where if you become really efficient at something, your demand goes really high. You can actually do a deep research on this. It's very interesting. In fact, the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, is recommending plumbing as a viable career option. But that's just a joke the point here is that it will take some time for ai to become good at physical dexterity stuff in fact there's a paradox as well which says that stuff which is very easy for human beings is very difficult for ai and stuff which is very easy for ai is actually very very difficult for human beings so if you have to make maggie it's pretty difficult for ai to do that right now if we talk about fixing a pipe in the kitchen it is very difficult for ai to do that right now but when it comes to looking at a bunch of excel sheets and figuring out common patterns ai can do that at a hundred X speed. So that paradox is very evident and I think as professionals, as leaders, it's important for us to be aware of this paradox when we are planning our career. Number six, workflow automation is going to be in super high demand. Of course, there's going to be an arbitrage window just like every other AI skill that has come into the world in the past two years. You learn something, you make money out of it for six months and then something new comes in. So the entire window of arbitrage is getting narrower and narrower. But the next big bet is in the field of AI automations and the problem 
is that most people are creating AI automations where the stakes are very low, right? And all of these AI automations that we see today work very well when the context is low, when the stakes are low and the happy parts are dominant. Now, happy parts are basically point A se leke point Z tak. If everything goes according to the plan, that's a happy part. But in the real world, in real products, things are unexpected, right? Things break in the middle. There are so many edge cases that only an experienced person can define. If you're able to design automations that can handle the edge cases, you'll crack a gold mine. Number seven, business leaders need to have some basic understanding of LLMs and agents. We've been training organizations across the world. I am amazed to see millionaires, billionaires, people who are running a team of say thousand people be completely oblivious to how LLMs and agents work. And I completely get that because they're so busy into their day-to-day -day work. They have no time to even learn about these things or even train their team members to learn these new things. But you need to know the core vocabulary. Otherwise, you know, they will never know what AI do they need to build versus what AI do they need to buy. Because if you are building something that already exists at a 100th cost, then you're wasting your time and your capital. See, when we talk about AI, I think a good example from history is the discovery of fire. And I'm pretty sure that when fire was discovered, there would be a bunch of people who would have burned their hands. But then we eventually understood how fire works and we controlled it, we manipulated it. And the reason that you're able to watch this video on your system is because it is made out of metal, which has been melted using the control of fire. So I think for the very first time, we're in the fire moment of universe. This is happening the second time, I think. And we just need to be very wise and very strong uh, in the first attempt itself. In fact, Jensen Huang recently came on Joe Rogan's podcast and there was a discussion about the desire to conquer. And Joe Rogan was discussing how this innate desire to beat and to conquer and to dominate is probably biological and not technological. So Jensen said that if we're able to create a super intelligent AI without an ego, we might have something which is really, really cool. But now the question is that what if one part of the world ends up using this technology and the other part is completely oblivious? That will mess things up, right? So I think this is a very, very important era for our entire society to be very, very motivated about learning AI as quickly as we can because the country who learns AI in the most fastest and the most efficient way possible will have a head start. So I think if you enter 2026, keeping all of these considerations in mind and we've made a bunch of videos on how to plan your career, how to spend your 20s in the age of AI. I'll put all of those links in the description. But I think it's important for all of you to at least try the new free AI tools that have been released by Google. We'll put all of the links in the description as well. And let me know in the comment section, what do you think about these new changes? Dunya just rate pe badal rahi hai, just rate pe changes ho rahi hai. I don't think koi bhi college ya institution was rate pe kisi ko bhi ye baate bata raha hai. And I'm pretty sure it's from a place of insecurity as well. But I really hope that they don't get more insecure. In fact, Triple IT Delhi ne to AI ko apne examinations may bhi allow kar diya. You can now use AI to submit your answers. The only catch is you need to submit the prompt as well. Brilliant move, right? I think this is super good. Now, I know a lot of people will say ki, oh, you can use AI also to write those AI prompts. Sure, you can cheat even here, but evolution is very smart and cheaters do not scale over time. So you can cheat an exam, but you can't really cheat your outputs at work. You can't really cheat your outcomes at work. So with that, I think we can end on a good positive note that you don't need to worry about unemployment. You need to worry about being unemployable. Use AI as your baseline and not the finish line because the world is changing very, very quickly. And if you learn today, you will thank yourself five years from now. I hope that you've clicked on the subscribe button and like this video. Comment kiye bina jana mat and kuch acha comment karna. Put a thought, right? Put some mind into it. Practice your analytical skills and let me know what you think. I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This was your dost Anj Mehra and you are learning from the Cutting Edge School.